So I decided to create an AI bot using simple, no programming tools that will simply take any audio file that I make and do different things with it. It's gonna send directions to my team for the day. It's gonna help me write chapters in a book. And more importantly, it's gonna help me write my newsletter. I'm gonna do all this just using auto files and just using no code apps. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is. We can get this thing up and going in less than 20 minutes. So stay tuned and build along with us. So in order to get this project complete, you're gonna need three things. You're gonna need a Google Drive where you can store all the audio files. You're gonna need Zapier. It's a communication tool that allows communication between different software. And you're gonna need AI. So you're gonna need OpenAI and the OpenAI key in order for you to actually get the spot complete. So I'm gonna start with going directly into your Google Drive. You'll go regularly into your Google Drive. You're gonna right click wherever you see an open space and you're gonna do a new folder. When you do a new folder, you're gonna call audio transcripts. Now, depending on what you want the bot to do, you'll create different folders for it. So for instance, if I just wanted to take notes, I'll make a little notes folder. If I wanted to do teams for directions you know, for the day, I'm gonna create my team directions for the day. If it wanted for chapters in the book, I'll create the chapters in the book folder and I'll just create the different tasks that I want and put it in different folders. But once you create the folders that you want, again, really super easy to do, right click on any open space, put new folders, and just make sure you name it something that obviously is gonna make sense to you. And then the next thing you wanna do is go into the app store and just do a search for transcription. And all you wanna do is find a free app that basically will transcribe a folder and allow you to share it. So for instance, I found this voice recorder online. It's completely free. Now I can tell you that the ads are absolutely terrible. But if you can get through the ads by just clicking away, by hitting close, you do get a recorder that does store on your phone. So I can come in here and I'm gonna basically record. Hey, this is Nuno, this is just a test and it allows me to store. So I go ahead and as you can see, it gives me file names and then I can hit okay. Then if I have my Google Drive connected and it's very easy to do, download Google Drive through your cell phone. And then what you can do is you can go to your audio files by hitting that little key all the way to the left, go to all recordings, go to your most recent recording. Oh, let me go back once. And you'll have the ability of hitting share. And if you have Google Drive connected, just like so, you then can take that folder and then on the bottom, you see it has a little drive icon right there at the bottom. You're gonna select the drive. I'm gonna go to my drive. I'm gonna go down all the way to the audio files, transcripts. And if I wanna make it for notes, I drop it in the notes. I'm gonna hit save here and I'm gonna hit upload. Now I'm gonna tell you why that's important. That's actually what's gonna trigger the automation a little bit later on, but I wanted to give you a quick little preview. All right, now that you got your voice transcription, let's go back to actually how to make this all work. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna need a Zapier account. And again, Zapier, we use it all the time. I recommend getting an account. You will need a paid account in order to do this, but I gotta be honest with you, I use this thing every single day. At the end of the day, I actually send a message to my team of all the tasks that need to be written. And then I also start getting ideas for my newsletter so I can have a couple samples ready for the end of the week when I do launch the newsletter. And then if I feel up to it, I can even do a little chapter of my book that I'm trying to get out. Just making things super easy so then it makes it very convenient for me and my lifestyle. So when you first get into here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit create zap. You're gonna get a blank screen, okay? Just like so. And I'm actually gonna create it from scratch for you. Now, the trigger is gonna be whenever a file, doesn't matter from which transcription service it is, hits your Google Drive. So even if you're recording on your computer, this will work because the second you load that file into the Google Drive, this thing will fire. So I'm gonna go to Google Drive, okay? And as long as I have my Google Drive connected, if not, I hit event, new file in folder, okay? I hit continue. Connect your Google Drive. It's just gonna basically ask for your Google password and username, and you're gonna do it in there. You're gonna hit continue. You're gonna select your current Google Drive. You're gonna select your folder. And again, remember, we just made audio transcripts, right? That's the one we want. But you don't stop at the main folder. You wanna go out to all the folders. So if you just did what I did and you connected the first folder, you actually wanna go back, click audio transcriptions. There's gonna be a little bit of an arrow that says show child items. You're gonna show the child items and you're gonna to go to notes because we just left a note and you're gonna come in here and you're gonna select the notes. Now notes is selected. You're gonna hit continue. All right, now what I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna test the trigger. It actually should have one in there, which is the one we just recorded for this exact example. As you can see, I purposely made to do that. And then it's all in here, okay? Now that it's in here, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a filter. 
the filter is basically gonna just make sure that it's an MP3 file or the file type that you saved it as. So if there's other files that sometimes come through when you're trying to save or upload, it definitely distincts which one it is and it'll just pass through MP3 files because it's what you're gonna need to actually work with the API, right? You're gonna come in here and what you're gonna do is if the file extension, and I'll show you where it is. I might've hit the wrong, yep, I think I did. See, file is PDF, that's not good. Yep, nope, so we gotta go back. I actually pulled in the wrong one. What it does is it wrote a text file along with an audio file, and we definitely wanna make sure that we're pulling in the right one. So I'm gonna go here first, and see, that's what I want. File extension MP3.3. So when you're going through the samples, after you download your first file into one of those folders, you're gonna to wanna to come over here and do file extension and look for MP3.3, just like I did. And now I'm gonna continue with that selected record. You have to do this part or else you can't write the rest of the automation. Now I'm gonna come in here and it's asking me, okay, only continue if, and I wanna make sure that that file extension, exact match, right? So exactly matches MP3, just like the way it was written, all right? And again, if you're like, well, I don't know how it was written, no problem, come on back. Come on back over here. And if you go to the actual file type on your test, just scroll down. File extension, you can copy that, save it, and then write this filter part then. All right, but super simple, file extension, text exactly matches, MP3. All right, I'm gonna make sure that this filter works. Okay, great, it works fine. Next action is gonna be open API. All right, it's gonna be the latest, and you're gonna notice a tool called Whisper in here, along with Dolly and GPT-3. I'm gonna come over here and what we wanna do is create a transcription. We're gonna hit continue. And now you're gonna connect your open API, all right? So you'll click on here, you're connected, but a lot of people get confused on where you can find your open API key. So I'm gonna to go to open AI, okay? I'm gonna log in and then I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my email address, or my Google account, I should say. And I'll have my APIs right here listed. So I'm gonna hit API. And on the left-hand side, you're gonna to go to API keys. You're gonna create a new key. So this will be test Zapier, all right? I'll delete this key afterwards. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna come over here and then I'll install it where it asked me for the API. Now that that's said and done, I'm gonna go ahead and connect that. I'm gonna go ahead and continue. Now the file, it got a little tricky, but you have to do file exists but not shown just because it gives it a really crazy weird number. And in the prompt, all I'm gonna do right now, you can be very detailed with it, but for just this example, transcribe this file and remove any redundancy, okay? And that's probably not spelled right, but you get the point. And then the response format is going to be text. And this took me a while to figure out, it's like, what language of the audio? If you click on this ISO format, it actually has all the different language and codes. I know that English right here is EN, so we're just gonna use EN, okay? and I'm gonna go ahead and continue. Now see, it pulls the file in, it's gonna transcribe and remove for any redundancy because I tend to repeat myself. <laughs> so I'm gonna hit test. All right, hey, this is Nuno, this is us to test, fantastic. I'm gonna publish. Now I could stop here and it can transcribe, but it's not sending my files anywhere. So what I wanna do is now I wanna send it to ChatGTP and create a story out of it, create reminders out of it, send it to Slack, do whatever I wanna do. So I'm gonna go back to my edit zap I'm gonna come over here and my next action is gonna be that I wanna take that and convert it to a Google Doc and place it somewhere, right? So first I'm gonna to go to ChatGTP because I wanna now make it nicer, right? I can use ChatGTP, I can also go back and use OpenAI. I wanna use ChatGPT4. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm going to go all the way to conversation. All right, and I'm gonna choose my account. I'm gonna hit continue. All right, now you're gonna come over here and you're gonna add a little bit more to that user message. You're gonna go ahead and say, clean up this transcription and make it a note that goes into a Slack channel for my team, all right? I come in here, I do all that. Now, the model I wanna select is, I personally, you can do 3.5, which it is the cheapest and the, you know, it does work pretty well, or you can come in here, and select the model. If you wanna do super advanced, you can do four. For now, for these simple tasks, it's gonna be turbo, super easy. If I wanna use a memory key, meaning I want this thing to always go back and like check what was previously written, in this case, I don't need that. 
I don't have any images, but I could translate different images, do different things I want with it, but I want to make it super easy. And I want to make the max tokens 1080, just in case it's a long message, which again, I tend to be redundant. And you are a helpful assistant that helps write emails. Again, very simple prompt. This is not the prompt I'll recommend. I'll actually show you some of the ones that I developed in the other ones that we did, but I kind of wanted to walk you through just so you get a general idea, but you can go bananas with some of the prompts you have and really get some really cool things in here. Then I hit test step. And now it's going to take this. And obviously it was a very short message, but it will help at least test this. All right. And it's like, Hey team, it's Nuna. I wanted to send a quick test note to our communication and this channel is working fine. This is just a test message to ensure I literally wrote the whole entire email. So I can go ahead and this looks great. I'm now want to send an email. This is where it gets cool. If I wanted to send this in Slack, I can send it in Slack. So all I have to do is type Slack, pick the channel I want to send it to and send it to Slack. If I wanted to write an email, which I do in this case, right? I could do it through Zapier or I can do it through Gmail. I have my Gmail set up. So I'm going to click on Gmail. I'm going to just send email. And obviously, because I know this is going only to like my team, I'll just send it to my team email. I'm going to choose my account, which is right here. And then I'm going to hit continue. And the two, it's going to be to my team. Like I said, team at, well, for this example, let me just send it to myself. Cool. And then from here, I can do from Zapier bot. We could call it an assistant name, marry the AI assistant, whatever you want to do. Oh, it didn't take. So Zapier bot. Okay. I'm going to click away from that. No reply to. This is a test. Or it could be notes or team. All right. Make it super easy. All right. And then the body is going to be, notice how it goes in an order. It's going to be number four and it's going to come all the way down and I'm looking for content. Yeah. Right here. Boom. Okay. And then from here, I can go ahead and hit continue and I'm going to go ahead and test step. This will automatically send an email to my inbox and you see it already shows unread sent in inbox. So it's sent, it's unread and it's already in my inbox waiting. Now, just to show you how I've been using this. I've been creating different tasks for my team using this. I've been creating chapters in a book for using this. And I've been using this to create, you know, pretty much anything that I want to. And I'm keeping expanding on it. Like the notes was something I wanted to do with you guys today. So you guys have an idea to do this. So let me show you what I mean by this. I'm going to go over to the left-hand side. I'm going to go back to my other zaps that I've created for this. And I'm going to give you an idea how I wrote the zaps and what made them just a little bit different. Now, remember, it always starts with a new file hitting the folder one of the ones that I created. And in this case, when I save it to the team folder, this is where it's gonna fire. So I'm gonna come in here, it goes into the team folder. Let me go to the edit zap so you can see all the details. Again, we like to not hide nothing from you guys. And we hit continue. Now, see, it went into the team directions for the day. I do this at night, at like seven o'clock at night when I finish work and all the things are racing in my mind that I got to do for the next day. So then I can get it out to the team that night so they're able to read it first thing in the morning. I created the, the transcription directly in here. And again, super simple on this one, transcribe this audio file. I then take that same transcription, put it into chat CTP. I used it for in this case. And I wrote, take the following transcription and instructions for the team in a numbered format, remove any necessary words and repeated points, clean it up so it's legible and makes sense. Here's a transcription. That simple. My team loves this because it makes before when I used to kind of be all over with the order place and orders them, it gives them the direction and cleans up any redundancy, anything that I'm doing, and it automatically sends it out. And then it sends a very clean message to our main Slack channel where everybody's operating from. Super easy to do. Now, let me go to the other one. The other one is basically write a newsletter. Now I'm really terrible at writing. This is the main reason why I did this is because sometimes I just like, I can say the things that I want to say, but when it comes to writing, I will literally do everything else, but want to write something. So the fact that I can do this makes it very easy and convenient. I have one for emails too, where again, I dictate the email that I want to do. It puts it into my draft and then I adjust the to and the from, and literally I'm done writing an email that has to be a little bit longer, that has to have a little bit more explanation in it. It just makes my life a whole bunch easier. And honestly, I do this while I'm going to the gym. I wrote this newsletter while I was at the gym and I write the tasks at the end before I go and eat dinner with my family. And it just makes my life incredibly easy. This is again, what AI is all about to make these nuisance tasks or these tasks that you hate doing and make it easier for yourself. So for instance, for this newsletter one, again, I'm going to edit the zap. We're going to show you directly how I did it. New file goes into this folder, which I created. That's just the newsletter folder. The transcription happens again, boom, the conversation in ChatGTP, 
is basically first to create the actual message. I gave it a much longer details regarding who we are, what the newsletter is about and everything else. And along with some of my style and everything else, I also was very clear that when I'm saying things and the way I'm saying it, I wanted to keep my voice and my brand voice. So I don't want it sounding like somebody else. So I say that in my prompt. And then I take that full complete message, you know, I go through the whole entire steps and then I ask you to create a subject line or a title for this newsletter. Then not only do I create a text document for it and I place it in the folder. So if you have Google Docs, which you should if you have a Google Drive, you basically can create a document from text in Google, give it a document name, the document content, and it literally copies and pastes the whole entire thing in the same exact format that I originally created the letter. And look at this, I am not kidding. In our first newsletter that went out like this, it wrote this beautiful newsletter that obviously had everything that I wanted to go through, put it in my voice, and I was able to quickly convert this and format it into a really awesome newsletter. And then on top of it, just in case I didn't want to go into the Google Drive, I send myself an email with the same exact thing. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that, folks. But again, hopefully this gives you an idea. Very easy to create. Again, all you need is these three simple tools, but an assistant that would normally do this might cost you anywhere from $500 to $300 a week. I'm doing it for about $30 a month. So again, strongly suggest you try this out. Had a lot of fun building it out. Hopefully you guys have a lot of fun using it and we'll see you in the next one.